and welcome to Law Matters. My name is Michael Conroy, and I will be your host as we explore various legal topics that impact the lives of many of us or our friends or families on a daily basis. I'm a partner at Hassett & George, a full service law firm with offices in Simsbury and Glastonbury. I've been in practice for 27 years, and my practice is concentrated primarily in the area of civil litigation, handling such matters as personal injury and insurance coverage disputes. On this program, we hope to bring you information that is eye-opening and informative regarding areas of the law that touch many of our lives, but about which there are common misconceptions. Please remember that this program is informational and is not a substitute for legal advice regarding your particular situation. Each individual case is unique, and while we hope to inform and educate you regarding general legal issues, I cannot urge you enough to seek competent legal representation if you are presented with a legal problem. Your rights and financial well-being could depend on it. We welcome your feedback regarding the show. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, or if you would like to request topics to be covered on future episodes, please email us at lawmatters at hgesq.com. Today's topic will be social host liability. Whether a small dinner party, family gathering, or large block party for hundreds of your closest friends, many of us at various points find ourselves, knowingly and voluntarily or not, hosting social gatherings at our homes. While we at Law Matters certainly don't want to spoil your good time, there are issues to be aware of before you plan that Memorial Day blowout or tell little Johnny it's fine to have a few friends over while mom and dad are away for the weekend. We'll discuss some of the potential criminal and civil pitfalls facing social hosts. We will also discuss some of the ways to protect yourself from these risks with proper insurance coverage and the risks that likely would not be covered by insurance. My guests today will be Jason Kasha and Jeff McDonald. Jason Kasha is an independent insurance broker representing the agency Brooks, Todd, and McNeil based out of Torrington, Connecticut. Jason originally hails from and lives in the faraway land of Farmington, Connecticut. When Jason isn't protecting clients' families and assets, you can probably find him playing princess dress up with his soon to be five-year-old daughter on the bike trail, fishing in the Farmington River, in the gym, or hibernating for winter with Netflix and a never ending full plate of sushi. Jeff McDonald is a partner at the law firm of Hassett and George. As a litigator who regularly represents both plaintiffs and defendants, Jeff has the ability to view legal issues from both sides. He has been involved in many legal cases where clients have found themselves in binds stemming from an incident that occurred at a social gathering. Jeff will be able to share with us the potential legal implications of decisions made when hosting a party, big or small. Jason and Jeff, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Mike. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, Jeff, let's start with you. We're heading into the, the traditional party season. We're heading towards graduations, proms, uh, Memorial Day parties, and then summer cookout season. Some, somebody wants to plan some sort of event, maybe at their home, maybe they're hosting it elsewhere. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, good question, Mike. Um, we've met with and represented a number of clients who have done exactly that, uh, especially this time of year where it is prom season, graduation season, uh, and plenty could go wrong. Um, so one thing that I'd like to get across is the importance of uh, not providing alcohol to minors. This is the time of year you have high school kids that are having events and some parents think that it's it's OK to, to provide alcohol at some of these parties. Uh, but the law in, the, in Connecticut specifically prohibits both criminally and civilly providing alcohol to minors. Um, criminally, if you if you provide alcohol to a minor, uh, you are subjected to fines, uh, potential jail time and, and other issues like that. Um, what we see a lot of is uh, civil liability that can result from providing alcohol to minors and social host liability. So here's a scenario that I think we've all heard of at various points in our lives. Mom and dad go away for the weekend and they didn't provide anyone with anything, but maybe they have high school age children. And especially now in the, in the days of 
social media and texting, uh, what can start off as one or two friends coming over, pretty soon you have a whole bunch more than that. But mom and dad may not have any idea what's going on. What sort of pitfalls might arise out of that type of situation? Yeah, and so first let me take a step back and I'll just touch upon the scenario where uh, alcohol is specifically provided by mom and dad. The civil pitfalls there are if someone who was provided alcohol is injured or injures someone else, a third party, um, when uh, the injured person pursues their claim for damages, it's going to include a civil claim against those parents that provided the alcohol. So the scenario you're talking about is a little, a little further afield, um, but there's still potential for social host and civil liability against those parents. It's a fact specific inquiry. but. If mom and dad know that their high school age children are going to be left home alone, there have to be certain precautions that they must take to ensure that there's not liability attributable to them. Um, that would be not making sure there's not beer in the fridge or alcohol available in the home, checking in on a regular basis. It's not enough to just go away, admonish your kids, uh, you know, not to have anyone over, and, and we all hope that our kids are listening to us. Um, but if the kids don't listen to you and they have folks at the house and it turns into a party of, you know, starts with four and ends up with 40 and they're consuming alcohol, there is a real risk that uh, if someone is injured, uh, whether it's someone at the party or a third party, that they will be able to bring the claim not only against uh, the parents, but also against the minor that hosted the party. So the minor uh, steps into the shoes, at, you know, essentially is the owner of the property and, and can be subjected to social host liability as can the parents. Um, so it's important when the, you know, in your scenario and the parents are going away to take additional steps, not just say, please don't have anyone over, but take some affirmative steps. Make sure someone's checking in at the house. Make sure that there's not a group of 10, 12, or, or 25 people at the house, because um, otherwise there's real exposure uh, to potentially you know, insurance coverage or, or you know, personal assets. If something were to go wrong and there would be an injury and someone got hurt. Right. And in that type of scenario, even if the parents do take what many would view to be reasonable steps to prevent something like this happen, that's going to be an inquiry, a fact inquiry based on the reason, reasonableness, right? Yeah, exactly. So when uh, the, the party takes place and uh, minors, which is folks under 21 years old, are consuming alcohol and something happens, we'll use the example of someone consumes alcohol and then leaves the party and gets in an accident, injures himself, or injures someone else in their vehicle or another vehicle, um, those injured persons are going to be look to be compensated for the medical bills, the pain and suffering, whatever injuries they sustain. And when they do that, um, there's gonna be a target on, well, who owns the house, who allowed this party to occur, whether that is the, the minor that was inviting folks, or whether it's the parents that knew or should have known, didn't do enough, they're always gonna be brought in. Uh, even if you're not there to see it, um, you're going to be brought in and you're going to have to defend yourself against those claims. Right. And Jason, in that scenario, um, kind of tying in the insurance aspect of it, when there is something does go wrong, someone is injured, uh, whether directly or indirectly, a third party that you gave the example, Jeff, of someone leaving the party after having consumed alcohol and then maybe causing a car accident, for example. Um, now that that minor who is the social host in that scenario, who's hosting the party at say mom and dad's house, even though he doesn't own the house, he didn't buy the insurance, is he generally speaking going to be considered an insured under that policy? The the driver being the... No, the, the, the social host, the, the, the minor the hosting host, right. the party, he'll be a, an additional insured under his he parents' homeowners, right? Insured, yes, and so the, the homeowner's insurance policy would, uh, for the most part, provide some protection, uh, depending on what the protection that that family has chosen. There is always something on there. Um, there are different avenues and, and different methods to increase that coverage. For example, the, the most common would be a one or two or even sometimes a three three or above million dollar umbrella policy. Um, and, and so, yes, uh, all permitted residents are considered insureds on the homeowner's policy under the liability category. However, um, and, and that that category does in fact protect for whether it's simply legal expenses 
to to go to court or if there are damages which need to be paid um but when with regards to your side to the to the legal side um you know the the coverage might be there but um there are stipulations and and you know small uh, you know the reading the fine print to mm -hmm. see what would in fact be excluded and i believe that from uh from the legal perspective as you guys both already uh, uh noted you know were they taking the proper precautions and and um you know an insurance company may or may not want to push back a little bit on on whether or not they're willing to to cover that yeah. but the point is that um yes they would be covered as long as the parents did their due diligence on the front end to to make sure that based on their family situation specific to their family and to their needs that there is in fact enough protection uh in case something ever did occur and that's you know that's an inquiry that i think everyone all homeowners need to undertake with their agent or their broker uh, to really assess their needs and not just price shop policies i think you know uh, you correct me if i'm wrong here jason but i think it's kind of a some typical amounts of personal liability coverage under home homeowners policies tend to be in the $250,000 to $300,000 range. Is, exactly. is that common? And, and, that's, and that, that could be appropriate for uh, perhaps a 25-year-old engaged or married couple that's together buying their first home, no children, they don't host parties, they don't have many assets to protect. And so that, that could be adequate. Um, you know, they, they don't have a lifestyle where, they're, where there's increased risk. Right. However, uh, in this particular scenario that, that, you, were, that you just brought up, uh, there is a significant amount of increased risk. And it sounds to me that whether or not the parents were going away, uh, or excuse me, whether or not the parents go away frequently or, uh, or not, they have teenagers at home. And that in itself is an increased risk. Teenagers have friends. Teenagers have friends in the community. They're often in and out of the house, picking each other up, giving each other's rides to athletic practice, to uh, plays, to extracurricular activities. Um, and the simple things that you might not even think about are these. Um, they might come over to do homework and trip down the stairs. I mean, there's increased exposures and increased risks that um, are, are particular and unique to, to each family's situation. Um, and then, of course, alcohol and being a social host is, is a whole other animal in itself. But carrying that basic 250 or 300,000 liability protection that you just mentioned is adequate for some, but it's I can't think of an example of a family with teenagers or multiple children where that would be adequate in the event that something were to occur. Right, you never need it until you need it. Um, and once, as we discuss this hypothetical with parents going out of town and, and children throwing a party in their absence, it calls to mind, unfortunately, several cases that I've dealt with over the years, and I know you have as well, Jeff, where um, one in particular comes to mind from a few years ago where exactly this scenario occurred. Parents went out of town and they thought they covered all the bases. They made sure that there was no alcohol on site. They told little Johnny uh, not to have any friends over. And of course that went in the left ear and out the right. Um, and what happened was uh, one of the attendees of the party had, well, uh, any amount at age 17 is too much, but had far too much to be able to operate a car. Went out, operated a car, there was an accident and one of the uh, individuals that was a passenger in the car um, sustained some pretty serious injuries. And the amount of liability coverage, which as I recall was about 250, about a quarter of a million dollars, was just grossly inadequate. Um, so the attorney representing the injured party did his job and pled the, the theories against the various players that needed to be pled, pulled in mom and dad, um, and there was no umbrella coverage. Now, in that in that instance, the actual social host, the child who was left behind, the, I think it was an 18 year old who was an adult, but since he's serving alcohol to uh, to minors, to people who are under 21, he's he's serving minors. Um, he was the social host. He was provided with a defense, uh, and that layer of liability coverage but the parents were pulled in as well. And without that umbrella policy to step in and fill in the gap, their personal assets were exposed. Um, so this is a problem. It's a, it's a problem that a lot of people won't anticipate. And if 
you're discussing your insurance needs with your agent or your broker, it, it's something that really needs to be considered and discussed because like, like so many other types of insurance coverage, you don't need it till you need it. Right. And when you need it and you don't have it, it's too late. And, and you brought up a point which I think is worthy of reiteration. And that is um, simply if a family is in a situation like you've just discussed and they are you know, having to go to court or, or being sued and they do not have the adequate coverages, um, yes, of course, whatever coverages you have will be once they're exhausted, uh, they are exhausted, but that it, it, the, the case does not end there. It, for those who don't understand insurance, having not having enough does not mean that you exhaust what you do have and, and everything's over. It means that you exhaust what you have for insurance coverages and then it's your assets and then it's the equity in your home, the savings in your accounts, the uh, equity in your vehicles. Uh, I'm sure there's there's more ways for attorneys to find to, to pay out. And, but if they did have adequate coverages, I mean, we're looking at anywhere from 20 to $70 extra a, a month. Sometimes, excuse me, for an umbrella policy, I, I take that back. It could be usually anywhere from 275 to $600 a year for a million dollars of coverage. Um, and in a case like this, you know, if somebody's suing for $650,000 and they only have $300,000 of coverage, to me, the return on investment for $350 a year for an extra $300,000 of coverage absolutely would have been worth it. And and on that uh, point, Jason, it's a really good point about the umbrella coverage because you know what we're talking about here is uh, folks being injured as a result of someone that's drank too much alcohol. And as Mike can attest, when, when we meet clients that have been injured as a result of a drunk driving incident, or maybe it's a, um, an assault that, that resulted you know, at a party um, where someone's consumed too much alcohol, the, um, the injuries are more severe. You know, folks that are driving the wrong way on the highway or they're driving too fast or recklessly on the roads late at night. When those vehicles get into accidents, the injuries are, are, are drastic. So, um, you know, it, it's vital. If you, if you take nothing away from, from this conversation here, I think it is vital for, for, you know, folks to consider speaking to their agent about making sure they have umbrella coverage. Because what that does is if you have, you were talking about a base coverage of about 300,000 for a home, and then your vehicle uh, auto policy may be 300 as well, for that extra 200 to $400 a year, you get a million dollars on top of, of both those 300. So it gives you 1.3 if you're involved in a car accident, it gives you 1.3 if you have an incident at the house, like what we're talking about with social host liability. Uh, so in my experience and dealing with the cases that, that I deal with on a regular basis, it's absolutely vital um, you know, to have an umbrella policy. And, and Mike, to your point, you were talking about um, the that that case example that you had so it, it reminds me of a, a family that i represented where it was this time of year weather was getting warm and uh, high school age kids had a uh, gathering at their house and this is a house in rural connecticut um much like many properties you know we'd see here in simsbury um where the house is a, a couple hundred yards away from the woods where there's a fire pit um and what happened was the kids that were 17 or 18, they had a couple friends over to the fire pit and the parents were inside. And a couple kids turned into 10 kids, 20 kids. And before the night was over, there was 30 or 40 kids there. Um, but the cars were parked all the way around back so you couldn't see it from the house. What happened at the end of the night was one of those high school age children left the party, a minor, having consumed alcohol, got into a pretty bad accident and injured a couple people. Uh, injured them pretty, pretty significantly. And so those injured uh, individuals brought a claim against that driver and then also brought in my clients who were the owners of the property. Now, those owners, touching upon what, you know, what we talked about earlier, they didn't provide the alcohol you know, that was in the woods. Uh, they didn't even see the alcohol that was in the woods. They didn't see all the cars that were there. Uh, however, what we learned was this was um, not a one-off party. This, this was a place where high school age kids would gather. Um, and so this wasn't the only Saturday where alcohol was consumed by this fire pit at this house. So those parents um, who, who thought that, um, you know, they could trust their kids out doing what they were doing and they were, you know, watching Dateline or reading a book, um, you know, that wasn't enough. 
Um, so, you know, owners of properties that have that age, children who know that kids are coming to the property, you, you have to take more steps, uh, you know, than just uh, uh, giving trust to your children. They have to uh, check in, see, you know, who's there, is someone consuming alcohol. If you, um, we talked about, or I mentioned that it's a criminal violation to provide alcohol to a minor. It's also a criminal infraction to allow minors uh, to possess alcohol. So even if you didn't provide it, if they're at your property and they're in the woods and they're by the fire pit and they're minors and they're holding alcohol, if you knew or had reason to know or, or didn't take reasonable steps to stop that or curtail that activity, you could also be criminally liable for that. So, so that's a scenario that we might not think of where we didn't give the alcohol, we don't even know it's there, we haven't seen it, um, but there's some history of understanding that these types of things may be happening. It's not enough to, to um, you know, bury your head in the Dateline episode. You have to be proactive right. and, and see what's going on and find out what's going on. Otherwise, like in this case, you're going to end up being a defendant in the lawsuit and calling your insurance agent to try and find out you know, what your coverages are. Sure. Where to get now, we've been talking a lot about minors having parties. Um, there are probably some people out there saying, well, my kids are grown and moved out. Or I don't have kids. This doesn't apply to me. So I don't have to worry about social host liability. True or false? Uh, I would say false. You, you all, you always should be worried about it, or maybe worry is not the, the right word, but um, aware of it, concerned about it. For the most part, if an adult provides alcohol to another adult, uh, as a general rule, there's likely not going to be civil liability associated with that. And the reason is the law presumes that the guest adult that's consuming alcohol is old enough and to be aware of the consequences of consuming alcohol. It's different when we talk about a minor um, because a minor is the law does not presume that that minor has enough experience to understand what you know, the consequences of alcohol might lead to. But with an adult, they are presumed to have that level of understanding. Um, so it's less likely that you're going to find yourself as a defendant in a lawsuit if that intoxicated person does something. Um, with that said, it's all fact specific. It depends. Um, you can. It would be very easy to imagine a circumstance in which uh, the, a party got out of hand. Someone was really overserved, and now an injured third party is looking at you who hosted this large event, and um, you know could potentially have some liability there. I will mention. It, you know, this is different from many folks may be aware of. You know, restaurants and bars. Oftentimes, when we talk about overserving, we talk about restaurants and bars. Right. They have their own statute. It's the Dram Shop statute that deals with what liability restaurants and bars might have. Um, and for social, for you know, individuals like us and, and other homeowners, um, it's different from the Dram Shop statute. And it's, it's a reasonable sta reasonableness standard. Um, and so it's going to be fact specific on you know what the event is, how much alcohol is being provided, and, and what results from there. So again, it, it really comes back to what is reasonable. And what is reasonable under the, per the specific circumstances of any particular event, that's going to be a fact-specific inquiry. So, you know, we may like to think, oh, well, you know, I was just serving wine to my, my dinner guests. This can't come back on me. But again, you know, if some third party, for example, is injured, uh, whoever represents that third party, part of their job is to look for ways to recover. Right. Um, and if if there's any indicia of unreasonableness or let's say, you know, you, you have five people over for dinner and you've got 10 bottles of wine on the table and then you, you bring out jello shots for dessert, you, you, you may be straying beyond what's a generally going to be considered reasonable. Um, right. Yeah. And, and in that scenario, without question. If a third party is injured, they're going to trace back well, where did that intoxicated driver come from? Right. Um, and they're going to find out that they're at the dinner party. They're going to hear about the jello shots. And there's no question that, that those owners are going to be, you know, part and parcel of any lawsuit. Um, and, that, and that's why, you know, um, there are precautions that you need to take at the event so you don't get into those circumstances. But that's why it's also important to know that you have the right coverages, because what might start as um, having three friends over from the neighborhood 
Um, you can't necessarily control what one of those friends does after they leave your home. Right. And so even if it was just one or two glasses of wine with dinner and we skip the jello shots, <laughs> if that person leaves and then you know was involved in an accident, it might still come back to you, even though you feel like you know you acted like an adult and, and behaved properly. And just as a footnote, it's generally a good idea to skip the jello shots. But, <laughs> agree. agree. Uh, so far we've talked about house parties and i just want to touch on it very quickly because we are we are heading into event season we're heading into graduations and proms and weddings and all that stuff and let's say you're hosting a one-off event away from the house you rent out some sort of venue but but you're hosting that event what sort of concerns do we need to to look at in terms of protecting ourselves so for the most part uh liability protection would and on a home policy or with, with or without an umbrella, hopefully with, would provide liability protection. However, for hosting an event, uh, it would depend on the venue. If, if it's a, a professional event, uh, there, are, there are options for event insurance, which is a one-off, one-day event with or without alcohol, with or without a DJ, with or without other vendors. Um, you check, it's as simple as checking off the boxes and it could be anywhere from, I think, uh, 125 to 550 dollars for for an event, and that would provide an excess li of liability insurance for that one particular event, um, if that's off site, off your property. Um, however, and that's for hosting specific to your to your answer. However, mm -hmm. your personal liability protection would protect you out in the community for for a variety of other of other examples. Okay, so generally, uh, if you're considering hosting an event of some sort, graduation party, a, a wedding rehearsal dinner or what have you, it's a good idea to get in touch with your agent to make sure that you're going to be covered. Absolutely. Okay. And, uh, and your agent will also, will also most likely have you check with the venue what type of uh, liability insurance is being provided if it's a wedding or, or prom. You know, it, it could be anything as simple as a pavilion at, uh, at a community lake uh, where you just have to sign up for your weekend to utilize that property. And then most likely there's no insurance, or it could be something like an actual hotel ballroom that you're renting out for the night and perhaps you're hosting it, but the venue is providing the food and, and the alcohol. And so what type of insurance do they offer for you as the host versus what you need to bring with you? So, so yes, consult your insurance agent, but also uh, it would, it would uh, it'd be imperative to compare notes as the host to whoever you're hiring and bringing in versus what you're offering. Right. And the hope is that you never need that insurance. But <laughs> if if you end up needing it, that few hundred dollars will seem like a drop in the bucket. And uh, even if you don't, I would think the peace of mind that comes along with it is worth every penny and then some. All right. Absolutely. That's great stuff. Hey, yeah. I was adding to, to Jason's comments, you know, it's um, the more people you're inviting to the, you know, the event that you're describing, the more of a risk there is right. that those folks um, overdrink, uh, do something they shouldn't do, violate the law, get into a motor vehicle accident, whatever the case may be. Um, so uh, the more people that you're inviting, uh, the more important it is to consult your agent, make sure you have the right coverage, or if it's at a venue, make sure they have the appropriate coverage. And if there's some excess uh, vet insurance policy you can obtain, uh, all the better because you can't, you know, you can't control uh, everyone that shows up. Can I make one more point? Sure, sure. So in, in any of these events, there are always people who don't drink. And then there's groups of people in our community who, who don't drink and who get together as sober events. And whether that's somebody hosting a barbecue for a group of, of athletes before <laughs> a race, so there's no alcohol involved, but these athletes, you know, like to get a little crazy when they're with each other and play a game of volleyball or, or you know, play a game of badminton. And, uh, and somebody slips and falls, there's still liability issues for just simply hosting at your home sure. with without alcohol. It, there does not have to be alcohol involved for a child or for an adult to get injured. And mm -hmm. there's, you know, it, there's always going to be a question of fault and carrying enough coverage to to help somebody through um, in, and to minimize what they are suing for is is always advisable. That's great. That's great stuff. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And we barely just touched on this topic. There's so much more. Um, but if anyone out there has any additional questions regarding specifics, please feel free to get in touch with any of any one of us up here um, or your own agent, uh, your own attorney can certainly help you with these these issues. 
All right, that's it. Uh, we're out of time for today. We hope that you found this show helpful and informative. Everyone loves a good party, and we're certainly not here to spoil your fun. But understanding the potential risks facing social hosts can help you and your guests have a good time without having to pay for it for years after the party ends. Again, this program is intended for informational purposes and is not a substitute for legal advice regarding your particular situation. Each individual case is unique, and while we hope to inform and educate you regarding general legal issues, I cannot urge you strongly enough to seek competent legal representation if you are presented with a legal problem. Your rights and financial well-being could depend on it. From all of us at Law Matters, thanks for watching, and please tune in next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.